Hey, coffee experts, those of you running independent coffee shops, you're always looking for ways that you can drop your costs. And we here at the Coffee Experts Club really understand that. And so we've started something called Indie Coffee Coalition. And what it's designed to do is to drop your costs on two of the things that you're probably experiencing the highest sales volume in your store. And that is energy drink and frat mix. Those two line items, we've created our own products and are offering you those products at a reduced cost so that you can cut out the Red Bull of America, you can cut out the main lines of energy drinks that you're doing and serve your own energy drink at a reduced cost on a line item that you're probably already making a lot of sales on anyway. The best way that you can grow sales is by dropping your costs and maintaining a current volume. So check us out at IndieCoffee.co and we'll love to tell you more there. It's almost like, you know, your favorite sport team that you follow mm -hmm. or people go nuts for that stuff and, and people would, you know, fight over which is the best location of roasters or which yep. barista best at which location. And, you know, through all that, it didn't matter what Cody was doing, was involved in every store and nobody even fought over it because there was, I mean, there wasn't two, there wasn't two roasters, you know, it was just Cody. And so when, yep. when, when we did take away the thing that people were following, and like you said, now Swig is doing an amazing job, you know, all of us kind of went and did our own things, but Cody, you know, Cody was the one creating all of the base for everything, you know, and people know that, you know, everybody knew that Cody was super involved. He was there for a lot of years and, you know, taking that with him into Houdini Coffee Roasters. He, he's starting off with an amazing fan base. Welcome to the Coffee Experts Club, where we discuss all of the insights, expertise, and drama that goes into making your passion your profession. Our hosts, Aaron, Ben, and Drew are three coffee experts who have taken their coffee experience and turned it into true expertise. They have consulted with major coffee brands throughout the United States and beyond, providing operations expertise and growth strategy for drive through openings, multiple locations, and everything in between. So brew yourself a cup and hang out a bit with the Coffee Experts Club. Hello, the real experts. No Aaron today. <laughs> the real experts, or should we say the only experts are here. <laughs> Welcome back to our uh, talk show, everyone and anyone who is listening. Yes, yes. Welcome. Welcome. Me and Drew are actually just chatting about how hot it is in Belize right now. It is... How hot is it? You said it's in the 90s? It's been about 100 every day for a long while now. Yesterday, <laughs> today, it's at like 109, 110. So I'm sitting on the floor of my apartment because the tile is cooler than the couch. Plus, you don't want to leave a sweat stain on the couch, right? I mean, it wouldn't be the first. Sweat on this couch probably too much. Yeah, I mean, I remember like up here it gets like in the summer sometimes we'll hit like 105, but like it's totally different when it's just a dry heat when like you, you can just like, you can be in the shade and be okay. But I mean, even when we were down there, my wife and I went down just a bit ago to Belize. It was in like, it was like 86. And I was like, this is rough. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's different. It's different. You know, I've been here almost two years and I'm I, on and off but more or less spend most of my time here and it's, I'm not used to it. And I guess you don't really get used to it. Yeah. People who grow up here, I see walking down the street, carrying, you know, little towels with them to wipe the sweat and they're sweating through their clothes too. So I guess that's just, well, Jesus, that's just normal. Does it cycle there? The seasons, cause I know like up here, like if, depending on whether it's like El Nino or La Nina or whatever it is, it, like the, the weather. Like we'll have like two, three years of like, it's just dry and hot and like two or three years of like three feet of snow in the winter. Does it cycle like that down there at all? I I was actually looking into it yesterday and we're about to hit a drought and that hasn't happened since 2019. So I think it's a five, five or so year cycle that this is just one of the driest years that we've had in a long time. And I think it was El Nino this year, which is like hot, hot surface Pacific ocean water. Mm -hmm which causes, I guess, we haven't had rain down here, which was supposed to happen a couple of weeks ago. So it's been, it's been dry and it's been hot. Well, Belize dry and still humidity is, yeah. you know, I'm taking a bath when I walk outside. So yeah, I think it is in cycles, but since I suppose since the Mayan calendar were complaining to me that since the Mayan calendar ended, they don't know when the rains are coming and going. Cause that's really what they, they were reading from the Mayan calendar was their seasons. Really? Um, not that we understand what that even means, but yeah, they, it was predicting the rains and the dry seasons and, and things like that. And since then it's been, they said this has been, they can't really predict it. 
So was it, wait, so was it like purely predicting, predicting dry seasons and wet seasons? Yeah, I, from their review to me about it, because I had no idea either. I was like, I thought it was just a normal calendar, like our, you know, days of the week. But yeah, it was accurately predicting when, when the rains would start, when there would be dry seasons and, and, and things of that nature. Crazy. Wow. Yeah. That's, they yeah, learned something new every day. Super crazy. Well, we just had on Mr. Cody Anderson of Houdini Coffee Roasters, also a good friend of ours, which was really cool. We were talking after uh, the other day afterwards, just how cool it has been to be kind of like on the outside looking in. Cause uh, you know, obviously we both talk and hang out with Cody from time to time too. Just seeing like him, like checking in, you know, every couple of months, what are you doing now, dude? <laughs> what are you doing right. now, dude? Cause it seemed like recently he's just been, you know, he was roasting for black rock coffee was the biggest last biggest roaster he was. And then he was seen like, I'm going to move back to back home. I'm going to work with ethos, the bakery and, and coffee shop. And it was going to work with them in their, their grain wholesale. Cause they wholesale like bread grains. And they're like, actually, you know what? I finally got the chance to start my roasting company and go with it. I'm like, geez, man, it's like. You know, like one thing after the other, and we talked about it a little bit, but kind of like slowly stair stepping him towards his like ultimate goal of being his own coffee roaster, which is really cool. I have to applaud him for that. I, I feel really, really good that he's kind of hit what he's looking for. I agree. I mean, you and I worked with him for years, and it's interesting to see. I'm sure looking at any of our trajectory from the outside in, but we're specifically talking about Cody right now, so we get to analyze him. It was interesting to see the way that he developed, you know, working around people. Cause he wasn't, you know, he did tech because he didn't really want to manage, you know, or, or deal with teams like that. And now, you know, seeing him go to manage a team at ethos and the things that he's learned and taken away from that and now going to do his own thing. And he's talking about building a team and what he's looking for in specific people. And that's because he's learned, you know, he, he has managed people and, and he realized these are the qualities I want in the people that I did manage. And I, you know, that's huge growth and I'm really excited. I'm really excited to see what he does with it because I've worked with a lot of people in the coffee world and not a lot of people actually walk the walk. You know, they talk the talk and they'll sell it to you and they'll sell you on their, their idea or their, their project. And um, when it comes down to brass tacks or when, when something actually goes wrong, they don't have the answer. But with Cody, you know, I can, I can have something break down <laughs> that I work on with someone else and I'll call Cody and he'll know what's going on or he'll be like, Check these three or four things, mm. and it's one of those three or four things. And I just, that's, that's real knowledge. Uh, not everybody actually carries that. Yeah. No, it's true. Like, I, I definitely don't give him enough credit for that. Like, the dude is super knowledgeable in, like, every aspect of coffee. Like, you want to talk about somebody who knows, like, the ins and outs of what is coffee. I mean, Cody's, you know, from everything from the bean to the machine to how it should be set up. Like, the guy knows literally everything. If you ever need anything, like he's the guy to talk to. I think it's so smart too that he was saying, you know, that part of his pitch to, you know, to potential clients is like, Hey, I know everything. Just let me do everything for you. So you don't have to do anything. That's so smart. If I was, <laughs> if I was starting a coffee shop you know, I, and I was, or maybe, you know, I was looking to retire and start my own shop, maybe after retirement, have something small. And I was just trying to get into it. The first thing I would be looking for is to hire a guy who can do everything. Because the last thing you want to do is like have to piecemeal everything together yourself and go, okay, who do I find for machines? Who do I find? Where do I even get the coffee? Who do I find who knows anything about coffee? Who can help me train my baristas? Like for him to sell a one-stop shop for maintenance, I guarantee you nobody even knows or thinks about preventative maintenance. So that's something that they work to <laughs> like all these things. Like it's so smart for him to just say, hey, I'll do it all. You know, I'll be your guy and just slowly grow it that way. And if he can, like you said, have a team of little mini Cody's underneath him, super successful. Like it's, it's got a bright future out of him. That's for sure. Cody's best friend maintenance. He's going to start his little YouTube channel. Cody's <laughs> best friend's maintenance. Yep. I, I forgot about that. I mean, it is funny looking back over the years, how many ideas for like his business we've all had over the years. We're like, dude, you should do this. You should do that. You should do this. And now he's like, hey, by the way, I'm doing all of these things we thought about, you know, six, seven years ago. Yeah. I, him and I were talking about, he, and over again, over the years, he's pitched ideas for names for his coffee shop and, or his, you know, his maintenance team or his roasting company or whatever facet of his business. And, 
I got to see him last time I was in the US and we talked about where the name came from. And he said that, you know, he, he mulled over names and he pitched names and ultimately he landed on Houdini Cody, well, Houdini Coffee, but we know him as Houdini Cody because of mm-hmm. his personal nickname he's had for years. So yeah. absolutely fascinating that he, you know, looped that into the business and he's known from that already. You know what I mean? So people see Houdini Coffee and it's, it's, you know, synonymous with Cody and lucky for him, mm-hmm. he's got a nice reputation in the coffee world. Yeah. 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 Talk about it. The guy who's got a good reputation. I think that's funny. That was, I remember when he, when he first started posting a couple of pictures on Instagram, the people were like, Houdini, Cody, wait, that's Cody, yeah. isn't it? And it's like, who was just slightly posting pictures about his roaster coming in. It didn't have his name on it at all. It just was Houdini coffee roasters. And people immediately like started putting two, two, two and two together. Like, wait, is, is that Cody? That's Cody, isn't it? Yeah. So funny. I mean, I, I mentioned on the podcast too, but since roasters and resilient kind of folded here in the tri-cities i mean we were you know for people who who weren't in our area because obviously (laughs) there's not a lot of people from tri-cities but like roasters coffee and and resilient coffee the the roasting branch of, of roasters coffee like we were we were the big fish and we were a lot of the coffee shops around here primary competition you know outside of the main players like starbucks and dutch bros we were probably the second or the, I guess that would make us the third largest and most successful coffee company in the Tri-Cities. I watched it happen to have the primary hometown hero, big fish player, you know, just essentially overnight disappear. Like there was a lot of room left open for a new big player in, in the Tri-Cities area. And the Tri-Cities area isn't small. I mean, we have, I think I looked it up last. It's like our metropolitan area is like population of over 300,000. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of people here it's a lot of room for a new good coffee to show up i think swig is really taking taking advantage of that they're growing really fast but it also opens up a really large hole for somebody to come in and be like hey i make really good coffee you know let me supply you and i think it's super smart it would be incredibly smart for any any local company to try to get in with cody as quickly as possible because he was the guy who was making the roasting the coffee for the big player. If I was a coffee company owner right now, I would say, oh, my biggest competition has disappeared and I now have the opportunity to pick up one of their main assets. I should probably get on that <laughs> knowing that you're going to have good quality coffee. And, and I mean, with the unfortunate demise of what happened with the company, you know, none of us who were in the company were really affected by that. And so Cody has, you know, the, the weight of being the guy that brings so much quality to what we did, you know, and we, over the years, I don't know how many, how many years roasters was in business, but we did develop a cult like following and, you know, our customers were crazy about what we did. Anything we put out is like a feeding frenzy. I remember we had to stop doing deals because it was overwhelmingly busy and, you know, they weren't insane deals. They were just regular deals and we couldn't serve everybody. Mm -hmm. We We had the building style with garage doors on some of our buildings and we'd have to open them up because the customer, we couldn't fit all our customers in the building. One of our (laughs) biggest buildings, Road 68, we couldn't fit everybody in just because it was an insane time. And so, you know, over the 10, 12, 13 years of that, I don't know, 14 years we were in business, we developed quite a following. And when that just disappears, you know, people are all looking for somewhere else to go because it's not, and anybody who knows coffee. The way that we do, you know, it's not just a drink, you know, it's not just a stop. It's not just Mm -hmm. another thing you do. You know, coffee is something that you become passionate about. It's almost like, you know, your favorite sport team that you follow Mm -hmm. or people go nuts for that stuff. And and people would, you know, fight over which is the best location of roasters or which barista best at which location. And, you know, through all that, it didn't matter what Cody was doing was involved in every store and nobody even fought over it because there was, I mean, there wasn't two. It wasn't two roasters, you know, it was just Cody. And so when we did take away the thing that people were following, and like you said, now Swig is doing an amazing job, you know, all of us kind of went and did our own things, but Cody, you know, Cody was the one creating all of the base for everything, you know, and people know that, you know, everybody knew that Cody was super involved. He was there for a lot of years and, you know, taking that with him into Houdini coffee roasters, he, he's starting off with an amazing fan base, you know, and. Most businesses would kill for something like that. No, that's so true. That's so true. Starting off with the, I mean, I mean, we were just talking the other day and these clients that have, are approaching him already 
because they knew him as as Cody from Roasters or had like a small account with Roasters. I mean, there's a couple of clients that he's working with now already who were, were previous clients of Brazilian Coffee and just had, you know, small accounts because they're small shops where they're like, oh my gosh, you're starting your own thing now. Heck yes, I'm on board. That's so true. Yeah, to be able to open a new business and immediately have a, a list of potential clients who are like just sort of waiting for you to do something. Yeah, can you imagine? <laughs> That's, that is every business owner's dream. Hey, experts, we've got something really awesome that we do here at Coffee Experts Club, and that's called the MyFirstDriveThru.Coffee Masterclass. So if you're opening your next coffee shop, I think a lot of times you may think to yourself, I know what goes into opening a coffee shop. I've been doing this for years, but maybe you've been doing it for somebody else. And maybe this is your first option of starting a coffee shop on your own. Or maybe you don't know anything about coffee and you're just like, I'm looking for a good investment opportunity. Starting a coffee shop seems like a good place to put it and you're going to enter into it. But what you don't know is all the things that you don't know, right? And so what we've done with this masterclass is taken behind the scenes how you find your first location, what you need to be thinking about in finding a location. We give you a gift in the masterclass where it's a step-by-step -step process of how you're opening your coffee shop, the different checkpoints you need from coming up with your plans and talking with the city and then negotiating a lease. And then how do you build a team and what are the different pieces you need to be thinking about? It's a great masterclass, door-to-door, -door, start to finish completely free on opening up your next coffee drive through So check it out. It's at myfirstdrivethrough.coffee and it's a great masterclass. You won't regret it. We'll see you on the inside there. But he did a really, a really catered service too. Cause I, I really wanted to learn what Cody did when I first started. It didn't happen that way, but that was what I was trying to do. And so I got to do service runs and I got to do, you know, just various things. And one of the things that we did was we delivered coffee to our smaller accounts and Cody would go in personally and deliver the beans. And of course that was his job at the time, but you know, it, he didn't do it carelessly. You know, he didn't do it thoughtlessly. He knew everybody by name and he knew what kind of blend that they would like and he'd bring them new things to try and he would do cuppings to stay current and yeah he, he's done full service and so you know that is the type of service that people can expect from him going forward especially now that it's his own you know we were passionate about what we did but it was never our business and yeah you know, it's his you know that that's another level that's like a 10x amount of passion he's going to put into it just because true and that's how it goes you know it's like raising a kid or or, <laughs> or building your own house you know you're not going to do it thoughtlessly you're going to plan everything out and you're going to make sure that the True. foundation is sturdy as as the you know the shingles on the roof yeah no that's so true yeah working for somebody else in doing how well you do and then working for yourself is so so completely different mm -hmm. like you know if, if it's my if it's my money and my business that's on the line you better better believe <laughs> i'm going to make sure that the service is top notch 100 percent yeah, I, I, I have a feeling that Cody's going to, going to do yeah. fantastically. I think, I think his biggest problem is, or issue that he might face is might just be, you know, growing too fast. People want to, people want too much of his time, which, which is a difficult part. And yeah, that's where the, the whole managing of teams mm -hmm. comes in. I mean, cause I, I, we've talked about it at length over many episodes, but like one of the most difficult things about, you know, owning any sort of business in the coffee world is the employees. Like we used to always say like they're, they're your best and your most difficult asset are your employees because they can be bringing on a good team can just shoot your business to the moon. If they're great, if you bring on a bad team and it feels like you're just, you know, drudging through the mud day in and day out, trying to keep this thing going. So it's interesting to your point about him learning how to manage teams is, is hopefully he can pick that up because if he gets, gets a good team underneath him, great. But if he gets super successful and, and can't find a good team, that's going to be tough. I think that might be his only issue. It's he's, he gets too much business. One, I think one, one good thing he's got going for him in that aspect is that it's like a niche market. I, mean, I age myself and say kids these days, you know, but kids these days, <laughs> college isn't necessarily in the cards for everybody. You know, and, and college is there to set you up with a job. And what he does is like a trade, but you don't True. need to go to trade school for it. You know, there's no union. There's no, there's nothing that really supports the ascension of knowledge and skill through that, through that exact business that he's in. And so he's in a really interesting position to teach people like that who are interested and mechanically inclined or, you know, it takes, I don't know if, you know, I'm sure people on here, unless you're just getting started, have met various roasters or or techs and they have interesting dispositions. You know, they're, they're, they're peculiar, <laughs> peculiar people, very, very knowledgeable, but they're peculiar in a, in a nice way. And 
I think that Cody could set up something really nicely where it is like an Ascension thing. It's like, you know, what we do with the collab team, it's like, a, it's like contract work, you know, and he could set something up like that, where he's really paying the people with him to ascend with him, you know, yeah. and learn more and gain more clients and take care of accounts. And people are looking for direction, you know, especially right now, there's, there's so much going on in the world, but I think if you brought someone on, you know, I look at the people, I go to Valvoline and they're trying to get my oil changed and I see people who've worked there for years and years, you know what I mean? And I imagine it's a pretty well paying job, it's not crazy. You know, it's not like it, you're not going to get rich doing that or become, you know, financially independent, but it, it's, it's a nice skill to have. And it's probably something people really mm -hmm. enjoy to do. And what Cody's doing could be something very similar, you know, hiring young mechanics who want to just come in and do their job and leave. And it's not a lot of people interaction. And I think a lot of people these days don't really want to be involved with a lot of people, you know, small teams, yeah. fine. your small clients are fine. And I think that's what clients want too, is a small intimate team working on your machines or working on your accounts. And I think Cody's in it, it he's, there's a, there's a potential, very bright future ahead of Cody and his departments that he can build out. That is something I didn't think about. Like it, it, if you look at coffee roasting more like a trade, it makes a lot more sense. Like just in the way, the way that you can bring people on the way that you ascend through it, but you're right. There is nothing like there's no plumber's union for, for, you know, coffee roasting. It's not like you can be an apprentice. I remember I thought about that way back in the day, you know, when I was like in my early twenties, like, what the heck do I do with my life? I'll just become an electrician. I'll join an apprenticeship. Because it is like, it's one of those things that you can learn and get paid at the same time. It's just, there's yeah. very few things that you can do that in outside of the trades with college these days. And, and I think, you know, just culturally the, the costs of college is very forefront on people's minds these days. You see a lot of young guys who are like, I'll just go into the trades or I'll work a job. At least I can make money. And coffee roasting really does lean to that because they would be learning, getting paid, your mechanical inclination of working on machines. I, I never really thought about that. That's super interesting. I was thinking of it from the, from the retail, you know, customer facing side of things. But if you're just a roaster, treat it like a trade, pick up some guys who are looking to join a trade and make a career out of it. You do have the potential to make, build really good teams that way. It's true. And I mean, an espresso machine tech, a high paying job. And because there's so very few, <laughs> it's like, unless you're really plugged in, like you can call on Marzocco and it'll send a tech to you, but it's going to cost you. You know, it's not a cheap. Yep. You'll pay for travel. You'll pay for stay if they have to stay. There's a lot that goes into that. And I mean, I, I have ideas if Cody's business was my business, you know what I mean? But he has the uh, opportunity to undercut, you know, a La Marzocco with all of the knowledge, you know, and I, I've known techs that are independent from La Marzocco now, so they're out there, but it is a, it's a very high paying job, you know, because it's yep. such wise knowledge. And if you don't know what you're doing and you open an espresso machine, it's overwhelming. Yeah. <laughs> There's pipes, there's electric, there's hydraulic systems, there's all sorts of stuff in there that if you don't know what's going on, it just looks like nonsense. Luckily for those people, Cody is very excited to look into that stuff. It is interesting. You would think with like the utter, utter saturation of coffee shops everywhere, especially like in the Pacific Northwest now, you know, where, where we are, you would think that there would be more of a roasting tech side base. And I guess that's probably due to the fact that it's not like I can go to, you know, my local community college and get a degree in coffee tech, like I could <laughs> as a welder or something like that. Right. But yeah. you would think there'd be a higher, higher percentage of, or number of people you know, one to the espresso tech space, just because, yeah, I mean, I was talking to Cody about people, people charging, you know, a hundred bucks an hour to work on, you know, a Lamar Zoka machine. Like if I'm 22. And tell me I can make a hundred dollars an hour. You better believe that's the first thing I would, would be to be going, yes, sign me up the, the, for that now, please. And especially if I am slightly mechanically inclined. So I guess this is, this is the ringer to any of those 20 year olds out there who are like, <laughs> so what to do. I like to, I like to work with my hands and I want to make money right out the gate. Look into coffee tech, find a, a local Cody, like, like we have and try and get on with them because that's, that is. That's an industry that's not going anywhere anytime soon. Like there's never going to be a shortage of coffee shops in the Pacific Northwest. Oh my gosh. Anybody who has the opportunity to learn from Cody, you know, he's, he's not, old, he's not an old guy, but he's developed a disposition for teaching, you know, and understanding where people are at. And 
I've personally learned a lot from Cody just over the last, over the last year, we had our espresso machine on day four and on, on the island explode, the steam boiler blew up and I was out of luck, you know, and I called Cody and he, you know, talked me off the ledge and walked me through things. And just like, it's from as extreme as my boiler is leaking, you know, out of the, where the element connects to it to, Hey, I have steam, extra steam coming out of this release, you know, valve in my machine. And he goes, oh, it's this, like that, like, just mm -hmm. like that. I was working on it for, for a long time. And he's like, oh, it's obviously just this thing. I didn't even know the name of that thing. You know what I mean? So, and I didn't, I just described it to him. I didn't send him a video. I didn't send him a picture. I just said, hey, this is what's going on. And he, he walked me through it, you know, and obviously I've grown in my knowledge over time. So, he, but he's been able to meet me where I'm at every time, you know, because mm -hmm. he, I'm sure he remembers not knowing anything because, you know, it sucks to not know. And it's, it's frustrating, but as you grow, you know, you kind of forget what that's like, but I think Cody has been learning on, you know, from roasting to, you know, the tech side of things through trial and error for a lot of years. And he's had a lot of real world experience from, you know, traveling down to South America to meet the people that, that grow the beans to, you know, like he mentioned, almost blowing his face off just because he's <laughs> to, to depressurize the steam boiler, you know, so. Anybody who gets opportunity to learn from him is, is going to benefit greatly if they're even slightly, you know, motivated to learn this type of stuff. Yep. I would say like, even just for the, you know, our listeners who might own their own coffee company or, you know, aren't roasting yet, like definitely look for those qualities in your employees. That was one thing we, we did well was sort of celebrate those and try and push those qualities for, for guys who are like, look, you know, I may not be the best barista. I'm not really good. I don't really have good customer service skills, but like I can pull the machine apart really quickly for you and try and diagnose stuff. Like if you have people like that on your team or, you know, working in your shops, I would say, do what you can to kind of push them into areas of your business where they can actually flourish, because you might be surprised you might get a Cody out of that. If I own a coffee company, I would rather have somebody like Cody on my team who I'm helping build up into a roasting technician part than three amazing managers mm -hmm. because I can manage a customer base in the shop. Like I can manage, you know, a day to day. I have no idea how to pull a machine apart and mm -hmm. it's going to cost me a heck of a lot more <laughs> to try and figure that out than it is to manage a shop. So like what I'm saying is like the Cody's are rarities and you should, if they're in your team and you can highlight them now it's only going to be fantastic for your business in the future. Or if you don't have those guys look for, and you're not in the Tri-Cities area, unfortunately you're somewhere else, look for a Cody that's in your area. Somebody who's offering a full service like that, who you can trust, who can do machines, who can do coffee, because that is difficult to learn on your own or trade for it. It really is a part of the industry that you only learn through trial and error over years of roasting and machining tech. So it's like, you could spend, I mean, the eight or nine, 10, 11 years that Cody spent trying to figure out roasting and machine tech or just hire the guy. <laughs> yeah. I think, I think maybe one of the reasons that the industry is lacking technicians is because I did sales for Drinkworks for a long time. So I talked to like 500 coffee shop owners and people want to do things themselves, you know, and sometimes to their mm -hmm. detriment. Sometimes to my detriment, I try to do things myself when I am not the most skilled person and I'm not the most knowledgeable person in whatever it is that I'm attempting to do. And I know that going into it, but I'm stubborn. And I think a lot of coffee shop owners are, are st we're stubborn people. You know, we're not in coffee because we want to follow the rules. <laughs> we're in coffee because we yeah. want to have fun our own schedules. And there's a certain level of, okay, the fun's over now. The business is growing and I need to do this properly because I have employees relying on me. I have customers relying on me. And. Luckily, and now there's Cody's out there and, you know, people like the Coffee Experts Club who we have been around the block and we were totally willing to learn new things and we're willing to teach. And it's, I think, rare in, in this specific industry, coffee, people are, you know, they're gatekeepers on knowledge and that's absolutely op opposite of what we do here. And it's the opposite of what Cody does. To yep. Yeah. That is, if you hired Cody and you want to just stand there and watch him work and explain everything he's doing to you, just because you're curious, he will do that. <laughs> He'll take time of his day to, to explain everything just because, I mean, that's the guy just loves coffee and loves what he does. And he likes sharing that with people, I think too. So this, this is also a paid advertisement for Houdini coffee roast. <laughs> just kidding. But yeah, yeah. Super fun to talk to him. I can't wait to see, see where it goes. 
I just had a kid and I'm like, you gotta, you gotta stay in business another like 15 years or so, sir. So my kid, so my kid can come work for you be a little <laughs> mini copy roaster in the future. <laughs> well, it's been a fun one, Mr. Moody. Hopefully you don't die of heat exhaustion down there in Belize. You guys get some rain soon. I'm going to go float down the river, see where I end up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, All right, yeah, we will uh, talk to you guys later. Hey, coffee experts, those of you running independent coffee shops, you're always looking for ways that you can drop your costs. And we here at the Coffee Experts Club really understand that. And so we've started something called Indie Coffee Coalition. And what it's designed to do is to drop your costs on two of the things that you're probably experiencing the highest sales volume in your store. And that is energy drink and frat mix. Those two line items, we've created our own products and are offering you those products at a reduced cost so that you can cut out the Red Bull of America, you can cut out the main lines of energy drinks that you're doing and serve your own energy drink at a reduced cost on a line item that you're probably already making a lot of sales on anyway. The best way that you can grow sales is by dropping your costs and maintaining a current volume. So check us out at IndieCoffee.co and we'll love to tell you more there. Hey experts, we've got something really awesome that we do here at Coffee Experts Club and that's called the MyFirstDriveThru.Coffee Masterclass. So if you're opening your next coffee shop, I think a lot of times you may think to yourself, I know what goes into opening a coffee shop. I've been doing this for years, but maybe you've been doing it for somebody else. And maybe this is your first option of starting a coffee shop on your own. Or maybe you don't know anything about coffee and you're just like, I'm looking for a good investment opportunity. Starting a coffee shop seems like a good place to put it and you're going to enter into it. But what you don't know is all the things that you don't know, right? And so what we've done with this masterclass is taken behind the scenes how you find your first location, what you need to be thinking about in finding a location. We give you a gift in the masterclass where it's a step-by-step -step process of how you're opening your coffee shop, the different checkpoints you need from coming up with your plans and talking with the city and then negotiating a lease. And then how do you build a team and what are the different pieces you need to be thinking about? It's a great masterclass, door-to-door, -door, start to finish completely free on opening up your next coffee drive through So check it out. It's at myfirstdrivethrough.coffee and it's a great masterclass. You won't regret it. We'll see you on the inside there. Thanks so much for joining us today. For those of you who are looking to become a coffee expert yourself, we offer an incredible, thorough training online for opening your first coffee drive-thru at www.myfirstdrivethrough.coffee.